Hey, what's going on everybody? Caleb here. This video, I want to clear up some confusion when it comes to Bitcoin investing and the difference between buying Bitcoin and trading Bitcoin because people teach this wrong. If you get started with Bitcoin and you're researching stuff on YouTube, people will be teaching you how to just buy and hold Bitcoin and they will call this Bitcoin trading. And I think it's just a minor confusion, but these are two different things and I'm going to explain to you the difference and also what tools you wanna use for each one. So let's talk about the first one, which is just buying Bitcoin. And this is one of my first Bitcoin videos I did, how to buy Bitcoin. And this helped a lot of people get their very first Bitcoin and put it on their mobile device in a mobile wallet. But you can also use any other form of wallet. And when you use this as your investment strategy, you're basically buying this currency, Bitcoin, and hoping, speculating, that the price of this cryptocurrency is going to go up over time. Then later down the road, you can either sell it or use it to buy things online. And that is how you get started. So if you want the tool for buying Bitcoin, I recommend Coinbase. It's the most simple and it's one of the well-established exchanges. And I'll leave a referral link if you buy 100 dollars worth of bitcoin you'll get ten dollars free so with that you're just going to own that bitcoin sort of as if you traded your united states dollars for euros but instead of getting euros you get bitcoin when you do this you're probably going to hold on to that bitcoin for an extended period of time you're probably not going to buy cryptocurrency on coinbase and sell it the same day for profit why well, mainly because there's a lot of fees. If you buy just like $100 worth of Bitcoin, there's like a $2 fee or something like that, which I know $2 is not the end of the world, but you're not going to be executing hundreds of trades. You would lose all of your money in those fees. If you're just buying Bitcoin once or twice every now and again, the fees are not the end of the world. But now I want to look on the opposite side of Bitcoin investing, and that is actually trading. And this is actually a more active form of investing where you basically take advantage of the volatility, the highs and lows of the Bitcoin price, and you buy and sell at the right time to make money. And usually this will be within the same day at least. So that's why it's called day trading. You buy Bitcoin low, and shortly after that, you sell it for higher. And if you can do it right, you can make a lot of money. So this is a more active activity. It's not something you just buy Bitcoin and let it sit in your wallet until the end of time. Instead, you go in there and you put offers saying, hey, I'm gonna buy Bitcoin at this price and I will sell Bitcoin at this price. And you can do different rules. So for example, you can say, if Bitcoin hits this price, then I want to put a sell offer. And if you're trained, you can arrange these rules in such a way that you can make a profit on all these little exchanges of Bitcoin. That is what Bitcoin trading is. For this type of investing, there is Coinbase Pro, but I actually recommend Binance. And I'll also leave a link for that in the description as well. So with Binance, the fees are incredibly low. You're not going to be paying a dollar or $2 just for $100 worth of Bitcoin. It's like a fraction of a percent every time you make a trade. That small fee can certainly add up if you're doing very large trades or a lot of trades. However, hopefully you are making money with these trades, so the fee is just one of the consequences of that. These are the tools that I recommend to get started with Bitcoin, and both of these tools will also allow you to get other cryptocurrencies which work in a similar way. They are just slightly different than Bitcoin, and that is pretty much a subject for another day, like the differences between the cryptocurrencies. But if you can trade Bitcoin and you can make money off of that, then you can probably trade Ethereum or any of the other cryptocurrencies just fine using the same strategies. It's more so that the act of trading is the art and that is where you learn how to make money. It's less about what you are trading. So it doesn't really matter if it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or it could even be stocks if you're not into cryptocurrencies. Pretty much if you learn how to trade, you should be able to adapt to different things to trade. 
So I'm using Bitcoin as an example because that's what's most popular. However, these principles are going to apply for the other cryptocurrencies as well. Now, when you do trading, you're going to have a currency that you're purchasing with and then the currency that you're trying to buy and sell. So for example, if you're buying and selling Bitcoin, the currency you're going to use is the United States dollar if you're from the US. So in other words, you buy Bitcoin using dollars and then you sell your Bitcoin and get back dollars. If you want to get away from fiat currencies, then you can actually buy and sell other cryptocurrencies using Bitcoin as the purchasing mechanism. So you can buy Ethereum using Bitcoin and you can sell Ethereum and get Bitcoin back. So that's just one example. You can do a couple other variations on Binance. And one last tip for Binance is that if you are a US citizen, you will want to use Binance US, which is a slight different variation than the original Binance, but it works just the same just so you guys don't get confused with that. Now that's a little bit of extra information on trading. Now let's talk a little bit more about holding the cryptocurrency. When you're doing this, you are not going to make any money while you hold the currency. So pretty much you're just trading your fiat currency, United States dollar for Bitcoin, and you're just holding it as long as you want until you sell it. At no point do you make money during that until you sell it. So what that means is if you buy Bitcoin when it's really, really high and the price tanks and never goes back, then you lost your money. The reason I bring this up is if, if you're trying to make money now, then buying and holding Bitcoin might not be the best strategy and you might wanna look into trading Bitcoin. However, trading Bitcoin is very hard and also very risky. So what tends to happen is with your trading, you're not going to use 100% of your buying power. You might have, let's say $10,000 ready to use, but your trades might only be $100 or $1,000, but you're not going to go all in on a trade because you might lose everything you have. And you definitely do not wanna do that. So if you're going into these apps trying to be a cryptocurrency trader, you're trying to time the market and make your millions, be careful not to just use 100% of your buying power because if you buy at the wrong time, then you are in a forced loss position and you, you might not be able to recover from that. I've seen people do this on YouTube with apps such as Robinhood, they basically, they buy all of the Bitcoin they can and then their, their price went up, they sold all of the Bitcoin, then they bought more when the price was low and they sold it. And in the end, they did manage to make a profit, but I think that was more of a coincidence than a strong strategy because they could have at the very start bought all the Bitcoin that they could, and then the price could have gone down from 20,000 to 10,000 and stay at 10,000 for many years to come. If instead they only invested a portion of their buying power, the wins and losses are normalized so that you're not risking it all or putting all of your money on the table as in you're gambling. You don't want to gamble here. You want to try to invest. So in general, you should have lots of highs, less lows, but overall you're gonna have some lows, some highs, but it should normalize out and be an upward wave. 